Well, hi there. Welcome to the Clint's Reptiles Reptile Scavenger Hunt 2020. I've made myself a bit of a challenge this year to find all sorts of rad Utah reptiles, some of which I've caught before out here, some of which I've never seen in my life. Let's get going. Plus, I got a lot of other bonuses, like bonus mammals, bonus birds, bonus insects and other arthropods. There's gonna be a lot of cool stuff we're gonna see, but we're gonna get going on that reptile scavenger hunt. Let's get moving. just stumbled upon a robber fly and I'm gonna see if I can get close enough to give you guys a good look at it. Oh, there he is. There is a robber fly. And these guys are the Apache attack helicopters of the fly world. They just are terrifying killers in the air. One of the coolest insects in the world. We saw a big lizard up here. There it is. It's a ginormous whip tail. That's a whiptail? Oh, wow. That is the biggest whiptail I've ever seen in my life. Here's a, a sagebrush lizard. These are so beautiful and so different looking from the ones we saw in the red sand area. There's an awesome raven down here. It's gaping, probably to cool down. They don't have that many exposed surfaces and so the inside of their mouth, that's about the only place where they can get a any kind of uh, evaporative cooling going on. They can learn a lot of vocalization. Not quite as much as parrots, but they're smarter than parrots. If I had one though, I would only teach it to say never more. There'd be no other words it would learn. Dragonflies hold their wings only out to the side like butterflies. Whereas their cousins, the damselflies, can fold their wings back over their body like a moth. Dragonflies also, most of them, their eyes touch. Though if you look at prehistoric dragonflies, their eyes didn't, and there's still one group that doesn't. The damselflies, their eyes generally don't touch each other. They are stinking rad. The closest one I've ever seen. He's getting a good scratch on that rock, I think. Is that what he's doing? Yep. Can you make it talk for him? See what he has to say. Hey, Bison, what are you thinking? Ah, oh, I was so itchy. Oh, this rock is a heaven sent. Oh my goodness. Oh boy. Thank you, Mr. Rock. Goodbye, Mr. Bison. I am out in the desert where we have found an enormous swarm of Mormon crickets, which are actually a type of katydid, and they will get into such large swarms at times that they cause car accidents because people are sliding and slipping on all the Mormon crickets. They're crazy, they're ginormous, they're ferocious, they're terrifying, and they're everywhere, and I'm excited to show them to you. Right here is just full of Mormon crickets, and they're actually everywhere. They are literally everywhere. They're everywhere. You go out on the road, and there are Mormon crickets everywhere, and they're eating each other. You see how they move like this? Right now they're running from me, but they're always running because if the one behind you catches you, it might eat you. And you see this one here, it is a male. You might hear it calling a little bit. You can tell it's a male because it doesn't have an ovipositor, which is the large kind of blade-like structure that you'll see coming out of the back of some of them. So these are all males. Here's a female right here though. Okay, let's see if we can catch her. This is also how you can tell that they're a katydid. Because katydids, the females have that sort of blade-like ovipositor. You see that? Look at these things swarming across the road. This is how we spotted them and knew we first needed to stop. I've heard about this before. Look at this guy. This little male here 
carrying off a dead one. I'm managing to scare them off now, but a lot of times when they run away, they bring with them their dead. Not out of kindness, but because they're looking for a good meal. What a carnage. Let's see what we can find next. All right, I got my first lizard of the season. I think, I think this is a female side blotched lizard. I need my field guide to remember exactly. I thought it was gonna be Scoloporus. It's a beautiful little one. Uh, look at this pattern. It's so nice. So pretty. Ooh, 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 ooh. It's doing quite a little tail waggle. I don't want it to drop its tail. Hey, you're okay, you're okay. You're okay, here, I'm gonna set you on my hand. I'm gonna let you go a little bit. This confirms it because this is a male side blotched lizard and this is one of the orange phase males. You see the blotch on his side? That's why they're called side blotched lizards. And I've been excited to talk to you guys about side blotched lizards for a long time because there are three different kinds of male side blotched lizards and they play rock, paper, scissors with one another. And so what happens is you've got three kinds. One of them is a very, very aggressive male and he patrols a big territory and he defends it and so the females in that area are just his. There's another one that really just, he's like a monogamous male. And so he finds a single female and then he guards her very closely. But he will get chased off by the more aggressive territorial male. So if he's around, that guy has no success. There's a third type of male that looks like a female. That one that we saw earlier might have been actually one of these males because he looks just like a female and the really, really aggressive male doesn't even notice him. So he can sneak in and mate with all the females in the area. That aggressive male is too busy patrolling to notice one that looks just like a girl. But the, the, the monogamous sort of snuggler male, as I like to call him, he will notice if that sneaker male comes in and tries to mess with his female. So the snuggler male beats the sneaker male, the sneaker male beats the aggressive male, and the aggressive male beats the snuggler. Rock, paper, scissors, all three have success and all three morphotypes, all three different mating strategies actually of these males, they all persist. And those are side blotch lizards. All right, let's see what's under here. There it is. Look at that. That is a sulfugid, a sun spider, which is an arachnid. And it has good chelicerae, which are those mouth parts that are uh, like pincers. But they are not true spiders. They don't have any venom. Those chelicerae are not modified into fangs. But they are stinking rad. What have you got, Owen? I have a garter snake. Oh, it's beautiful. That is how it is just immediately out of the wild. That pleasant already. Well, I've caught some recently this year that have had some pretty spectacular colors to them. Oranges and, and yellows. Just all in the same place. This one has none of that, but it's got really distinctive high contrast patterns. Yeah, that white on the back and almost a reddish tint. Pretty. Good job. Goodbye, snake. Well, this is our second snake of the day, and it's a beautiful little gopher snake. We found it out on the road, road cruising, and the snakes around here, both the garters and especially the gophers, they are just the nicest snakes I've ever come across in the world. He never rattled at me, he didn't hiss, he didn't posture. Uh, you know, I just grabbed him by the tail and I put a shoe up by him to give him a chance to bite. He didn't bite. You know, I, I grew up in Colorado with bull snakes and they were all full of piss and vinegar whenever you would find one. And these amazing snakes though, around here, they are just unbelievable. And I am in love with this guy. Hey Owen, did you want to hold him? We hold have him? a gopher snake. Yeah, we do. This is like buttercup, huh? Mm-hmm. Like yeah. first. Remember, you don't have to. You don't have to squeeze. Just support. There you go. Oh, sorry, go first. I like her. Is it a boy or a girl? I don't know. That's a great question. 
I wish we could keep her. This one's tempting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Now, Clint, what are some of the laws here in Utah about collecting reptiles? Oh, they depends on the reptile. Some of them are controlled, some are not. You have to report which ones you collect and keep if you're keeping them. Seems like that's that's one of the new things. And, and you have to have year. a permit, uh, your, your herping permit, in order to keep anything. You can, you can go catch anything that's legal to touch in the wild, but you have to release them right back where you found them, right when you found them. Once you decide to keep it, you have to report it and you have to have your license. Now let's say I, I catch a snake, like the snake, keep the snake, and then a couple months later I decide don't like the snake. Can I let it go? No, no you should not. What are the three things I can do with it? You can find a new home for it. You could probably preserve it as a specimen, or you could keep it some more. It's rare that you can find any sort of a pet snake with a personality as good as this snake that has been uh, encountering humans for the last five minutes of its life. We've spotted our first scorpion of the night. Whoa, that is a monster. This is a huge scorpion. And watch this, watch this. You've still got the ultraviolet light? This is how we spotted it. Is that amazing or what? That scorpion is an absolute monster. What a find. So the rule with scorpions is if you don't know what it is, don't touch it. Uh, in general, if they've got larger claws, they tend to be not quite as venomous. This one's got pretty big claws. So they, they often use their claws more for dispatching their prey and venom less. But that Telson has a huge amount of venom. So that venom might not be very powerful, but it's got a lot of it. And this is a very big scorpion, so I'm gonna add it to my list of things not to touch. That is amazing. All right, so we have a tiger whip tail. He's now inside of a centrifuge tube. Obviously, we're not gonna keep him in there. But whip tails are super cool because they are basically tiny tegus. In fact, I think, I mean, they're, they're teed lizards. I don't know why they're not considered to be tegus. It is just a little wild tegu. They got a forked tongue. They got a head just like that, and man, they are smart. And this one is a juvenile. I don't know how well you can see this, but it's still got a little bit of the blue. When they're little, they've got blue tails as do many juvenile lizards. Oh, what a magical, wonderful little creature. I love whiptails. He is being so good for us. Yeah. Oh, whoop, there he goes. He's right by you. Hey, buddy. Yeah, there you go, old guy. Look at this little fence lizard, he's so cute. Genus Scoloporus. I love these little lizards, we see them a lot. Looks to either be a female or a male out of season, I'm not sure. They get these beautiful, beautiful bellies though, around breeding time. Fence lizard. All right, we just found a little Mormon racer. This is Caluber Constrictor Mormon. And when they're juveniles, they've got a very different pattern than they do as adults. As adults, they're kind of a dull greenish color with a yellow belly. But as babies, they've got beautiful, beautiful striking patterns. And this one is kind of halfway through that transition. Almost all the snakes I found in Utah are just nicer than their relatives that I've seen outside of, of this area. I don't know what selects for the mellow temperaments of them. But this is a really nice little racer. I love him, he's beautiful. I just love this little guy. He is so low key for a racer. These guys often, they eat a lot of reptiles as well and insects, which is a really cool thing. And they really do behave a lot like lizards. So they're very, very active, extremely fast snakes. They get out and bask a lot. This is actually one of the more common snakes that I see but one of the harder ones to actually catch. We found this one under a rock, so we got lucky. Ready to be free, buddy? Thanks for visiting. Okay, so this right here is a velvet ant, which actually isn't an ant. It's a species of flightless wasp 
They're also called cow killers. And the reason that they get that nickname is because their sting hurts really, really badly. I gotta tell you too, they're super cool and they're, they're very well defended because of that nasty, nasty sting. And so there are some species of jumping spiders and things that I've encountered around here that are mimics of these mutilid velvet ants. They are so cool. I always get super excited with those. You may or may not know this about me, but I really love ants. These carpenter ants are hard at work. And what I was really thinking was neat is this trail that they've got. Man, I'm not sure these our carpenter ants are very different looking than the other carpenter ants I've seen. Wow. Those are stinking rad. Dave gave me a call and he'd stumbled upon this little desert tortoise which is not only my first desert tortoise I've ever found, but it's actually my first wild native turtle I've ever found in the state of Utah. And I guess I didn't find it myself. This is all Dave Kaufman's doing, but I am grateful to get to see him here. He's an adorable little guy. Morphologically, they look a lot like the sulcata tortoises that we have in, in the pet trade, but those are from Northern Africa, also a desert tortoise. So it might just be a convergent evolution, but there does seem to be some level of relatedness between the African tortoises and the American tortoises. I've heard that you can hybridize redfoot tortoises and sulcatas, which just throws me off because they don't seem like they should be closely related at all, and apparently they are. But these guys, they're, they're doing okay. They're, they're losing some habitat. And over the years, a lot of people have taken them as pets. And so actually, if you're looking for a pet tortoise, there are a, a pet desert tortoise and you live in their native range, they're actually looking for people to home them. But please don't ever take them from the wild. They're very, very important out here. Frankly, you know, you shouldn't take any animals out of the wild because, you know, there is so much captive breeding programs out there get a much healthier animal, free of parasites, free of anything else, don't ever really come out into the wild and take these animals out of the wild. Come out here and enjoy them, enjoy seeing them, but leave them exactly where you found them. I found them. Oh, wow. What timing though? Well, things are working out actually pretty nicely. This is our second desert tortoise that we've found. Brian Cusco spotted this one. It's an adult, it's got its own little burrow there. And this is my first adult desert tortoise that I've ever seen, my second desert tortoise ever. Things are actually shaping up pretty nicely. Here we've got a desert spiny lizard. Pretty excited. This actually isn't something you see every time you come out here. Wow, he's I love him. sitting pretty still. As a kid, I would see them in my field guide and I thought they looked like bearded dragons. But in reality, they do look a bit like little bearded dragons. They really do. They've got their own special, like it's a collared lizard bearded dragon hybrid. A little out of my reach. Well played, little lizard, well played. Look at this incredible beetle. Oh my gosh, Garrett found him underneath a log. We've seen some evidence of them before, but not a live one. Holy smoke. Look at that thing, it's incredible. It's huge too. I am a giant fan. If you know what that is, please let me know. Because that is quite a beetle. Just for the record, nowhere else we've been has been anywhere near this incredible. It's been so dry, it's even dry underneath the rocks when we flip them over. No mud, anything. And then this little oasis. All right, so this is the rare and elusive barefooted Kaufman. <laughs> and check this out. Whoop! Little red spotted toad. That was a tiny little. <laughs> yeah, that's a tiny little dude. There he is. Hey, buddy. Oh, come here. Where'd you go? Hey. Swim oh, for it. Go, 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 man, go. So, 
There's the car. We've done a bit of a climb. Two of us made it. Tragically, one Dave. One and a half. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dave and Brian, uh, they didn't make it. So, in their honor, we shall see what's up here. I thought you were gonna say threw a rock down towards them. Oh, because they're down there somewhere. Got all the way up here. Found Garrett carving away at this rock. <laughs> With my teeth. Look at how cool that is. Found some more. When you go herping, this is the thing. Even when you don't find that many herps, you find some pretty incredible things. It's just worth getting out there. Yes. It's crazy. I'm having a good time. Tell me what you have. A desert tortoise. That is so cool. And that's embedded. Let's check out those bite wounds. Holy smokes. Okay, so you got a big puncture wound there. You got a puncture wound here. Kind of a partial puncture there. Another puncture over here. What about right down there? Yeah, something, something either very large bit this tortoise recently or and I think this is maybe more likely. Sometime back when it was younger, it took a pretty good bite off of something. Owen thinks it was, what was it? Coyote. Dave Kaufman thinks? Cougar. Coyote. Or oh. dog. I think that it was a large armadillo. Oh yeah. Oh, I never considered that. Those super armadillo bites. Yes. These yes. are the worst. It could, it could actually be way less exciting than we're thinking and just be a dog. No, coyote. <laughs> I, I mean, cougar, cougar. The ground is just alive with iguanas here. This is the first wild iguana I've ever caught. This is similus, right? Ah, uh, uh, yeah, spiny similis, tail. Uh, the black spiny tailed iguana. Yeah. And uh, they are, they get, this is probably the most common spiny tailed iguana you'll see for sale. They get pretty big, and usually they're pretty flighty. They bite hard. This is just a little girl. She got me just a little. I'm just bleeding a little bit. Hey, you're in the Irwin Club now. Yeah. You've been bit by a spiny tail. But this, if you look up in here. Dave Coffin is our cameraman. Hi, everybody. Look at the way the muscles go right into the skull. Like, I talk about the diopsid condition, how the jaw muscles go through there. But I've never seen holes like that. I don't know if I've just never noticed it before. But it, they're really, really conspicuous where those jaw muscles go up into the skull there in the back of her mouth. Incredible lizard. I'm, I'm really stoked to have caught this. I notice how her colors have changed a little bit since we've caught her. Oh yeah, she's like She's a little lost. bit in distress, so her colors are lining up. Look at those bands. Look at that. She's beautiful a beautiful spiny tail. And just like the green iguanas, as you can see, they regenerate their tail. So mm -hmm. you got this little portion that's come back. Super cool species. How many trees did you climb in our pursuit of this iguana? I don't know, a lot of trees. There, <laughs> as many trees as there are in this park, I've probably climbed like a quarter of them already. <laughs> as you can see, when she feels me lining up on my grip just a little bit, she tries her best to get out. She wants to give me a little bite, but that's okay. Yeah, those Not teeth, though, they're serious. She's got some cute little ears on her, too. Thanks for helping me catch this. This is a no good worries. experience. Let's try and get some more. Let's see if we can find ourselves a big male. I'm trying to get the phone to focus in on him and not past him. Focus. Whoa! Danger! 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 Like yeah. How do you feel? Is this uh, the best pet lizard? This is not, but I think there's a close relative of theirs, the, the banana pectinata. Oh, yes. That, that is, is a beautiful species. They max out at about this size, and they're delightful. Great temperament. All the good things about iguanas across the board. Yeah. But like very few of the downsides. He's gonna run like breeze lightning hot and go. All right, Chandler's going in for the biggest iguana I've ever seen. Oh my gosh. That is the most intense iguana I've ever seen. Oh, he clawed me right in the face. Look at this. Look how beautiful that iguana is. Did he claw me up good in the face? Uh, yeah, he got a little blood. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, Not as much as you'd think. hit me in the face. And I thought he was ripping my lips apart. <laughs> Look at that. So he just dove in the water and submerged himself right into that hydrilla. And he was like a little statue. So now that I've gone, he feels that he's 
been captured, he's just gonna act like a little statue and hang out with us for a second. This is a dude. I have honestly, I mean, you don't usually see them in captivity that look anywhere near this incredible. Yeah, they're getting that natural sunlight. They, they get to pick their diet versus you just giving them what you believe they need. Exactly, you exactly. Know? And we've seen a lot of green iguanas on this island, on this trip. This is the biggest, most impressive iguana I've ever seen in person. Green iguana that I've yeah. ever seen in person. I've seen in anybody's captive collection yeah. that we've seen on this island or anywhere. Like this is the ultimate green iguana of my life to this point. That's awesome. I'm glad I could help you out with that. I man. was excited just to see him. Look at it. Look at that doolat. And you can tell how in charge he is because he didn't flee in the same way that the others do. No, he just stood his ground for a while. Yep. He let you guys check him out. And he's like, all right, I'm going to, I heard he's sussing you guys down. You realize, you know what, you're getting a little too close and you jump in the water. And it's crazy to think that this is not the biggest male around. This is, he just owns this little corner of the park. There are other green iguanas out here that quadruple his size when it comes to the size of right. the jowls, his head. He is just one of the big males out here. They can get way bigger, six plus foot out here. So, uh, you know, and here's the thing, here's the thing about me. You know, I, I told people a long time ago, one of our earliest videos, that iguanas, green iguanas do not make good pets for people. Yeah. And people are like, you hate iguanas. Uh, I love iguanas. Oh, that's I ridiculous. I love them. It, it's probably people who are just too used to them down here in South Florida. They don't appreciate the animal for what it is. At the end of the day, this is still a protected species and endangered in some of its native range back in Central and South America. So it's vital to have these animals still breeding captivity, even though we have a crazy invasive population down here. Absolutely. You know, this is still a species that matters. Just like the Burmese pythons, there's too many of them out here, but they're still an animal that matters. They're a living thing. They got to respect them. Absolutely not. You know, I, I don't hate these lizards. They're one of my favorites. People what don't thing. realize, like, you need a legitimate tree for your enclosure. This is a highly arboreal animal that's always living up anywhere from 20 to even 100 feet up in a tree hanging over a river oh. and you can't supplement that with a, a closet with some mesh over it you and, know? and that's the, one of the things that's really impressed me the most since i've been here is how tied to water the green iguanas are they are always hand within a short sprint of the water and they are swimming all the time yeah it's all vital. The time. when we think about that with basilisks and water dragons but for some reason we don't really we think of these guys up in the trees they like trees but they are usually on the ground near the water. Yeah, they're basically they a tree crocodile. They love the water. They're perfectly adapted, and it's the only way that they can get away from a true predator, you know, diving the water and getting the hell out of town. If you got a cat sneaking up on you, a raccoon. Here in Florida, raccoons will attack iguanas this size. Literally grab oh. them by the legs, grab them by the tail, and start harassing them until they're so tired they can't defend themselves anymore. Because, you know, this being a reptile, it gets gassed out. It's running on energy from the sun. A raccoon just needs to keep eating its Cheetos before it heads over and starts doing its little attack on the yeah. on this iguana, and it can fight all day, whereas the iguana just tires out, Ooh. and now he becomes a meal for something native. Look at those jaw muscles on top of his head. Look at that. Yeah, the, look at the jowls right here. Look at that. Just like a tag, you big, fat jowls. The crushing power in those jaws is insane, you know. It's an omnivorous animal, but at the same time, even though it's mainly eating flowers and in any other vegetation, it could easily take your finger off. That is I, I love fantastic. It. Thank you for pulling this out. No worries. I, you guys were talking about green iguanas. We had to catch at least one before you guys head and out. And what, what a one. Yeah, what a big, like the beautiful ultimate, one. The ultimate one. Got to see my first wild American crocodiles last night. And today, my first, first American alligators of this trip. Not too shabby. Well, I gotta tell you, I thought my herping was over for the year when it started to get cold up in Utah, but then Dave called me to come down here to Florida, and man, I have herped some stuff I've never herped before in my life. Uh, alligators. I saw my first ever American crocodile in the wild. I saw my first ever uh, water moccasins. I saw my first pygmy rattlesnake. I, I caught my first wild iguanas in my entire life. Uh, amoebas, we've just, uh, we've seen basilisks. We have had the most incredible time. I wanna give a special thanks to Kenan from, from Camp Kenan, to Chandler from Chandler's Wildlife, to uh, Tyler Nolan, and, and especially to Dave Kaufman, and also to, to the other incredible people that have welcomed us since we've been down here. We have had the most incredible time. Be sure to check out all of their channels. As always, like and subscribe. Check out this alligator. We hope to see you real soon. This is the 
craziest darn thing I have ever found while out road cruising. Are you ready for this? That is a fish. It's like costumes. And it is up here and it is moving. It is making time getting away. Look at this fish. He was just up, kind of moving along right here on the road. Let's see if he'll move a little more for us. I honestly, I've never seen anything like this. This is a, a catfish crossing the road. And, and given that this is an invasive fish, I'm going to leave it here. Yeah. And uh, we will let nature take its course. Insane.